You're watching Coping with COVID-19 with Chris Manners. Today's special guest is Phil Ginsberg. Hi, I'm Chris Manners and you're watching Coping with COVID-19. In this first portion of a two-part interview, I'll be talking to Phil Ginsberg. He's the general manager of the San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department and a California State Park Commissioner. We'll be talking about social distancing circles, summer camps, and some of the pandemic restrictions that have recently been lifted on park activities. Mr. Ginsberg, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's start by talking about the social distancing circles that have recently appeared in our parks. Where did the idea come from, and have they been successful? How many do we now have in our parks? Um, well, I'd like to say that we invented the idea, but in truth, it came from Domino Park in Brooklyn, a uh, very small park in Brooklyn, which was the first to, to try what I would refer to as behavioral art, uh, to remind people to social distance. I saw an image of the circles and called my colleagues in New York City uh, and decided to try it ourselves. So we, we started in four parks in four corners of the city uh, during a very warm holiday weekend. When we installed the circles in Dolores Park, Little Marina Green in the Marina, Jackson Playground, and Washington Square right before Memorial Day. And you know, our intention with the circles isn't punitive. It's really supposed to be playful. We want to help people use our park safely by providing a visual reminder of what appropriate social distancing looks like. And of course, this is in addition to lots of signage and outreach and mass distribution by our rangers and outreach workers and volunteers. And we were quite surprised by uh, how popular they quickly became. The result was really, really positive. And we've since expanded the pilot program to include Lafayette Park, Presida Park, and Alamo Square. And we currently have 749 circles in seven parks citywide. That's great. I think they're fantastic. Now, as restrictions are slowly being lifted, I understand summer camps are now allowed. How has the structure of the summer camps been changed to make sure that everybody remains safe from the virus? Well, let me start out by saying we're thrilled just to be able to, to provide camps at all, uh, given the virus. And um, so we've worked really hard to try to be able to provide a fun, safe environment. Um, our camps look different, um, but they still offer kids the same opportunities to forge friendships and get creative, learn new, learn new skills. Um, so in order to prevent the spread of COVID, uh, we're strictly following the health order, which includes temperature screenings and enhanced cleaning. We've designed our camps in pods of no more than 12 kids to limit co-mingling. Co kids and staff stay together in the same cohort uh, for each of the three distinct three-week camp sessions. This is different than uh, the way it's been in the past where kids and, frankly, counselors can jump from week to week to week. Um, so we're doing things a little differently, but honestly, for kids to be able to get out of the house, uh, see each other, see their friends, run around, actually play some sports, which they're allowed to do within their own pods, uh, it just it couldn't be more important. So we're really grateful to the health department. And, and, you know, there was no bigger champion of making sure that kids have opportunities this summer than our mayor. So a big thanks to her too. I hear that both tennis and golf are now allowed. What are the restrictions that have been placed on these activities? And what about soccer and basketball? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm laughing because if there's tennis and golf, there's soccer and basketball, but there's also baseball and volleyball. And there's lawn bowling and fly fishing and bike riding. So, uh, you know, San Francisco's, we're, we're, we're blessed as San Franciscans to have an amazing park system where you can do just about anything. So we've had to respond to a million of these questions. Um, so we'll start with both tennis and golf. Uh, they have now reopened with modifications in place to, again, uh, slow the spread or protect against the spread of the virus. Um, and in both cases, people need to engage in social distancing. Uh, they should be have masks on them if they're you know in a crowd, either on the court or at the golf course. They're supposed to refrain from sharing equipment. So people who are playing tennis uh, should be playing with their own balls. Um, no spectators. Uh, unless it's a parent or guardian of a minor that's playing. Um, in tennis, really right now, all that's permitted is singles 
You can play doubles if you're from the same household. And for golf, the modifications include making reservations online, uh, again, staying six feet apart, bringing your own uh, golf bag, and even uh, there's been some modifications to the pin and cup uh, to make it easier to retrieve your own ball. Um, basketball and soccer had not opened up to the public, although uh, for our kids who are lucky enough to be in camp this summer, they can play these activities outside within their own pods. Um, but for us adults, for just you know recreational sports, uh, the view is that these are pretty high touch activities with a lot of physical contact. So you know we we talk to our uh, public health colleagues and almost every day, uh, and you know we are certainly advocating, uh, you know to the extent it can be done safely to allow people to uh, fully enjoy our park system and participate in all the sports and activities that they're accustomed to doing. But, um, you know, we still have a little ways to go and we need to be patient. Uh, but there is so much to do in our park system. And, um, you know, we're hopeful that, that people will be, a, be able to get back to team sports soon enough. Yeah, I hope so too. So how have you been keeping our residents informed about how the restrictions have been updated and changed? Yeah. Uh, I, I never knew when I took this this job that we were going to be in the sign production business. Uh, but we probably uh, printed and distributed over 2,000 signs throughout our park system. And the signs keep changing as the evolving health guidance keeps changing. But we've been using physical signs, social media, electronic uh, newsletters, stories in the press, uh, outreach workers to try to make people aware of uh, various health orders. Uh, and how they affect park usage. Um, our rangers and our volunteers uh, uh, who are made up of uh, police and fire cadets and, and uh, neighborhood emergency response volunteers have all done a wonderful job of really trying to you know, encourage, inspire, and when necessary, remind people that you know, we are in the middle of a health crisis and, and we need to be safe. San Francisco, uh, I think overall we've done a, a a great job in managing this crisis and um, unlike many cities our parks have mostly been open we've had to close a few park features uh, like like small playgrounds and our basketball courts but Golden Gate Park's been open McLaren Park's been open Glen Canyon has been open and in many cities they just kind of threw up, the, up their hands and just closed down their parks and we haven't done that and so it's our responsibility to continue to use our parks safely and wisely and so it's our job to try to make sure people have the information that they need. Thank you Mr Ginsburg. Well that's it for this first part of our interview. Stay tuned for the second portion when we'll talk about Golden Gate Park's 150th anniversary and how our parks have been essential during this pandemic. You've been watching Coping with COVID-19. For SFGov TV, I'm Chris Manners. Thanks for watching.